Okay, guys, this chapter is officially completely nuts. First of all, as we predicted, Vegeta would come in and just simply punch the ground using his forced spirit fission technique to separate some of the energy that Moro has been gaining as he's been planet Moro. So we predicted this. It was pretty obvious that he was going to come in. It doesn't look like he's going to take the W per se, but he's definitely helping Goku. As we predicted, it would kind of be like a combination Goku and Vegeta to finish off Moro. Now we get this really cool panel of basically Goku flying in to try and take on the, the weakened Moro and we get some really nice panels and action shots here of Goku weaving in and out of Moro's hands. I really like these dynamic panels. I mean, Toyo did an excellent job here. This one on the bottom is, in particular, my favorite. As you can see, Moro's, like, kind of clumping up all of his hands to try and prevent Goku from getting close to him. I mean, this is, like, really a final boss sort of feel. And as Goku gets close, Moro is able to grab a hold of Goku, and that's really bad because Moro still has his magic even though he's a planet, and he's going to start crushing Goku, but not only that, he's going to start absorbing all of his energy, and we can see that Goku actually loses Mastered Ultra Instinct, which is really, really bad, so this is giving me major Metal Cooler vibes, if you remember from the end of Metal Cooler, when they're inside the big Getty star, and Metal Cooler is draining Goku and Vegeta of their Super Saiyan energy, this is like almost identical. So Vegeta is still trying to help. You can see in this middle panel here, he is shooting the ground with energy, with Ki Blast, which is using forced spirit fission. But I guess what he's saying here is that Moro has just so much energy that the forced spirit fission is going too slowly. I mean, he's got the planet, he's got the energy of the entire planet, and Goku is, is dying. So Vegeta here starts to charge up an energy ball, but it looks like a spirit bomb starts to form in his hand as Goten and Trunks offer their energy to Vegeta. <laughs> Vegeta can use the Genki Dama now, I think. So I'm not 100% sure yet if it's a Genki Dama or just a giant ball of ki. And here we get a very big surprise. We get to see Oob. So the Grand Supreme Kai is there with Oob, and he's telling him, I guess, to raise his hand and lend his energy. And I guess everybody on planet Earth that's observing the battle is lending their energy. Really interesting to see Oob here again. And as Goku is getting crushed and basically losing consciousness, you see this giant energy ball form in the background. Again, I mean, this looks very much like a spirit bomb. It really looks like Vegeta is holding a spirit bomb. We saw Trunks kind of do that against Goku Blazamasu, and it could just be a giant ball of energy as you have these just powerful people all contributing their energy. But the way that Vegeta throws it looks like a spirit bomb. I mean, I'm... I'm pretty sure that this is the friends lending their energy, just like a Genki Dama. And I, I mean, I guess, does that mean Vegeta is pure of heart now? And even more interesting is Vegeta basically has almost all of the moves that Goku does, except for Kaioken. Now take note how Moro's face in the last panel was not all deformed and froggish, and as he's crushing Goku, that spirit bomb or that ball of energy that Vegeta throws, it hits Goku, but it seems to also be hurting Moro there as well. And it seems like there's this big burst of light you can see from space, and Goku is absorbing that energy. So I don't know if it's a Genki Dama that both hurt Moro and also Goku absorbed or what we'll have to wait till we get the translations for an exact explanation of that but it looks like Goku absorbed most of it and some of that also hurt and deformed Moro but it looks like when that but maybe when that bubble of energy hits Goku that's when he's able to make this giant Susano Goku so it's almost like a Genki Dama like Susano Ultra Instinct Shield beast, titan, I don't even know what you would call this thing, but it's more than anything, I believe, the power of friendship. It appears that Oob and everyone else, Goten Trunks, and all of the Dragon Ball fighters have contributed their energy to Goku, and while he was in his last moment, he got that big surge of energy, and it, he bursted out this new technique through the power of his friends. And with that, he's able to, as we saw yesterday, start crushing Moro, start pushing him into the ground, get Mastered Ultra Instinct again, and he's going to burst out of it and looks like he's going to go in and smash the gem on Moro's head. So we had predicted for a long time that there would be a, possibly a Genki Dama. As always, it's an out to defeat any evil enemy. And in this case, we got sort of like the Trunk Spirit Bomb Sword, except this time it seems like it's the Goku Spirit Bomb Susano which is absolutely nuts. <laughs> 
as Goku flies in for the finishing blow, you can see Whis turn around. He's got Beerus in his hand as they're flying towards the Grand Priest Palace. And Goku there in Mastered Ultra Instinct punches the gem, shattering it, just like Annie Raza from Dragon Ball Super Tournament of Power. The fist crushes it. That is the final blow with the power of friendship. The spirit bomb, Susano. <laughs> uh, and you can see Moro here just completely start to shatter. I really like this final ending scene here. As you can see, his head is explode and his eyeballs are still there. <laughs> I wonder what happens to his eyeballs, but that was enough to, to completely destroy Moro. That is the finishing blow. Moro's destroyed. There's a big crater there and you can see Goku standing victorious with a big smile on his face as the Moro arc is finally, finally over. So, wow, a lot of interesting developments in this chapter. As always, we're, we're usually thrown for some crazy twists and turns. Toyotaro pulling out all these strange um, things that we don't predict, but also adding a lot of things that we do predict. Like, you know, we predicted Miris was an angel. We predicted Miris would sacrifice himself and give Goku Ultra Instinct. And we predicted Vegeta would come in and just simply punch the ground and use Force Spirit Fission, which, as we saw from the draft spoiler pages, that's the cause of Mora looking so deformed and, and froggish. Tons of action panels in this chapter. Worthy of a final battle. I mean, Toyo really did, I think, a pretty good job making this feel like the final climax of the battle. I mean, with these giant hands everywhere and just... And this feels like almost like a video game. You know, when you take a look at Moro here, he just looks like the final boss of, like, Metroid or something like that. And I, I feel it was, a, it was a pretty good ending. I mean, the, the whole Genki Dama Susano thing is a little wacky uh, for sure. Uh, but it's something different it took us by surprise and it's really up to you guys if you guys liked it or not I know as always people are going to say oh I'm done with Dragon Ball Super now but they continue to read it I thought it was pretty interesting uh, it seems like this isn't just some ass pull technique that Goku whipped out of nowhere uh, essentially it's the power of all of like almost like Genki Dama or friend energy amplified his ultra instinct to the point where he was able to do that. So it's not something that he's going to be able to whip out all the time. The spirit bomb Susano, it seems like he's only able to do something like that with the power of all of his friends on Earth. And it seems like Oob was really the catalyst to give that just that ball of energy just grew like a 100 times in size as soon as Oob contributed his energy, which is pretty interesting. I'm surprised that Vegeta's four spirit fission technique didn't do more. It seemed to be actually actually kind of just slowly hurting Moro, but before when he was using it, it only took a few hits to completely wreck Moro, so it didn't really feel like it did anything, to be honest, because Goku was fighting off Moro very easily in Perfect Ultra Instinct without Vegeta even coming in to use Force Spirit Vision. So the Force Spirit Vision didn't really seem to do anything. To be honest, it was more so Vegeta just gathering the energy from everyone. And again, I mean, I guess that means Vegeta's pure of heart now. We'll have to wait until we get translations. When we get the full chapter and all the translations, I'll do a full chapter review. But I think most of it's pretty self-explanatory. Goku gets his energy drained, Vegeta tries to help, but he can't really do much, and then Vegeta just accidentally starts <laughs> charging up against Kidama, or at least gathering the energy of all of his comrades. To be honest, I'm surprised because this felt so much like Metal Cooler at the end here that Goku didn't just use the energy to overflow Moro to the point where he exploded or something like that, because we've seen so much out of previous movies come in to take part again throughout the Moro arc via Toya Taro. So I think they could have ended this arc a really long time ago. Honestly, they could have just ended it with Vegeta using Force Spirit Vision and winning, and they could have, like, axed, I don't know, five, six chapters out of this arc. For whatever reason, Toyotaro really wanted to push it this deep, um, make it more of a, an everybody combined together sort of victory and really prolong this fight. But it's up to you fans whether you like that or not. It's going to be really cool to see this animated, no doubt, especially this final, final battle once we get Planet Moro. I think it's going to be incredibly cool when it's animated as long as Toei gets their act together. So I'm looking forward to that uh, in the year 2025 or whatever when we get through this arc when it's animated because... It'll probably be like 100 episodes or something. But this arc has come so far and been so long that I guess Toyo really wanted to do it justice by just dragging it out as long as possible and giving us all these wonky twists and turns, giving us the power of friendship, giving us 
perfect Ultra Instinct Goku using a spirit bomb Susano. I mean, like, I don't know how you could even write this stuff, to be honest, but I know for a fact that nobody in the right mind was expecting Vegeta to use a spirit bomb or Goku to have some sort of Susano level technique. So as always, Toyo gives us a few hints of things that we know for sure are going to happen, like Vegeta coming in and using for spirit vision, and then throws us for some completely weird twists, which we're definitely not expecting. And did it pay off? Well, that's really up to you guys. It's up to the fans. Did you think this was awesome or not? Um, honestly, I, I feel like it was a good end. I, I mean, I'm happy this arc is finally over. But there were so many different directions that he could have taken this arc. And this is ultimately what the successor to Akira decided to do. I think Toyotaro pulled out literally every string in the book. He copied so many of the old movies. He gave new techniques to people. He, you know, it's absolutely crazy. The only thing that he didn't include was Beerus or Whis getting involved. Well, Whis did get involved, but Beerus did not fight, which is something that fans still want to see. But other than that, at least it wasn't Gogeta again, which would be a little bit anticlimactic since that's how the Broly movie ended. But overall, it's done. It's over. Moro's finished. And that is the end of the Moro arc. So we don't know what the next arc is. We don't know if the Grand Priest is going to start the next arc with Mirus' death and his anger over that and his disappointment in Beerus and Whis. That's definitely a possibility. And we may not actually know until Jump Festa. So Toyo is supposed to be involved in Jump Festa come December when we should get knowledge of the new arc. I was hoping we'd see something here. We didn't, but we will definitely know next month a hint at least at what the next arc of Dragon Ball Super is. Hopefully it's an evil angel arc or something like that, but who knows? That's up to Toyotaro and Akira. I'm Mastar. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.